Dennis Fax Friesen with Investor Smarts Money and the Entrepreneurial Spirit. So welcome to today's episode. Today we have Justin Myers with us and welcome here Justin. Uh, thanks for having me on here Candice. So, so many of the businesses out there these days are online businesses and people who are doing coaching and you know authors and all kinds of phenomenal businesses but we also like to feature a lot of the brick and mortar and people who are just going out and doing uh, amazing work, not necessarily on in online businesses, right? And so I was just really intrigued by by the business that you recently started and wanted to talk a little bit about that. So thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, girl. So uh, let's start with where you started. Do you want to talk a little bit about your journey? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's all part of my book uh, that will be coming out, uh, GED to the CEO. Um, I am a small town, uh, South Georgia guy. I grew up in Savannah, Georgia, and a little, uh, ended up moving to a little small town called Richmond Hill. Um, mm -hmm. Very small town. Everybody knows everybody, um, you know, kind of deal. Grew up on values and principles and uh, relationships, and, yeah. you know, we're very, very close community. Uh, so I grew up in, in that kind of small town environment. And, uh, you know, I was a high level athlete, went to junior Olympics in uh, Taekwondo, um, played really high level baseball, won World Series um, in the youth leagues, uh, played travel ball all over the country. Um, so I've always been very uh, disciplined and committed um, to accomplishing what I had set out for. Yeah. And I ended up, um, out of high school, um, I ended up doing a, a little detail company. Uh, my, my dad was in the car business my entire life. Um, I was working uh, in a restaurant full time and detailing cars on the side. And then I ended up in the Navy. Okay. Um, best decision ever made on that forever. That's for sure. People always say that if they've been in the Army or Navy or, yeah. Yeah, any, any branch of service. I got very lucky in my, in my career because I got to work a lot with uh, multiple branches uh, just so the nature of what I did. Um, mm -hmm. It's a very big joint operation. Um, and I've worked with a lot of other countries. I mean, we worked with Russia, Jordan, um, dozens of African countries, um, Iraqis. You know, I've, I've worked with a lot of different nationalities. Um, oh. You know, we our job was to protect the 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 um, waterways and the, the merchant travel zones from pirates. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that in itself was its own amazingly fun adventure. Uh, <laughs> probably not a day goes by that I don't miss it. Um, but yeah. uh, physically it's a game of, it's a game of milliseconds, millimeters and, you know, I got medically retired for a reason, and it can, uh, you know, obviously I won't be able to perform at that same level uh, physically, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it, uh, it definitely built some good foundations uh, for me to be a business. One, you need to be extremely resilient. Yeah. Uh, the military teaches you resiliency through complete breakdown. Um, yeah. Completely break you down, they'll build you back up, um, you know, when you start a business, you're all super excited, um, but you're gonna get broken down. It's, it's just a matter of time. It happens to every single business owner on the planet. Yeah. Go through challenges. You know, some can, some can literally make you or break you. Um, and if you don't have the mental fortitude to keep going, you're probably not gonna make it. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um, so after the Navy then, did you already yeah. have a plan as you were kind of no, retire, my transition. No, my, my transitioning was uh, my transition was crazy. Um, I left in a wheelchair. I was uh, I was hit by an F one fifty on my Harley, and I had no plan. I had no idea what I was going to do. I mean, my career path was set up uh, in the military. Um, I really, honestly, didn't know what I was going to do. I ended up uh, going back into car sales just because I grew up in it, and that's what I knew. Mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up getting a uh, master certified with Toyota, uh, worked my way up in Toyota. And then I got recruited into the sign business uh, from my previous employer who uh, brought me over as the national sales director. Mm -hmm. so I went in there, learned, uh, 
learn the sign industry and I worked my way up to VP of that company and resigned December 15th of 2017. And I started this business, uh, Signs by Veterans, on April 1st of 2018. So we are almost approaching one full year. Wow. So did you retire from the VP just knowing that you wanted to do your own thing or, or quit I, any? Um, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't necessarily retire. Um, yeah, quit. You know, but it, uh, I did, I did know that I wanted to do things my way with a real mission behind it. Um, you know, to me, it's not about just money. Yes, we need money, um, mm -hmm. you know, to be a business in order to make the efforts and, uh, you know, make the impact that we want to make. Um, but to yeah. me, it's not about the money. I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, bottom, the bottom line in every majorly successful entrepreneur is it's not about the money. You don't go through the torment and you don't go through these processes because of the money. Because the first yeah. couple of years suck money-wise. Yeah. just the reality you know you do it because the the mission and the purpose behind what you're doing is just so big that you can't stop going after it. that's what keeps me going every day and so what is that mission so my mission is to help uh eliminate the 22 a day we have 22 veterans a day kill themselves and in my experience uh after talking with hundreds and hundreds of different veterans uh, going through therapy myself, going through different therapy groups with other veterans. Um, the, biggest, the biggest thing is a lack of purpose and a lack of direction. Mm -hmm. uh, so my company, I'm able to provide that purpose and, and that mission, um, you know, and being able to manage these guys um, with the things that they have going on in their life um, to right. be able to create their own freedom. You know, our core values are freedom. Like that's my core values and right. freedom stands for freedom, efficient execution, excellence expected, uh, discipline, um, dedicated discipline, objective orders and mastery. So we believe that you're going to, you're going to create your freedom through mastery of your craft, whether you're a welder for me or you're a project manager, or you're a quotation specialist or you're a sales rep. Mm -hmm. You're going to master your craft and you're going to have all the tools that you need to master your craft in order for you to be as successful as you possibly can and still be able to have the freedom that you want in life to be able to do the things you want to do and, and help the mm -hmm. people you want to help. So is part of that then um, allowing people to have flexible work um, hours and stuff like that? Because oftentimes, Absolutely. yeah, so if you're dealing with PTSD or whatever it is, or a physical disability, like you said, you, you know, had issues with when you were um, leaving, then, you know, there's so many different things that can happen, but so that's part of it as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot, we're, we're hundred percent cloud-based uh, systems mm -hmm. and software. So we can literally, I've got employees all over the country. I've got a team out in Austin, Texas. I've got a team in, in Virginia beach. We've got one up in Nashville. I've got some guys down in Savannah, Georgia. I've got my team here in Charleston. And our goal is to eventually have a veteran-owned local franchise at mm. every city in the U.S. Cool. That's great. And, and have the, you ever done franchising before, or is that a whole new thing again? Um, for me, it is extremely new. I work with, obviously, I work with a lot of big franchises, um, and my yeah. business partners, two of my business partners actually have a uh, very high level experience with big franchises, uh, and doing franchising. They own, they own, they both own their own companies and have franchise dozens of locations each. Wow. Yeah, it's great. It's all about your network. Hey. It really you like you don't have to yeah you don't have to know everything but you know if you've got these connections or if you just keep digging and searching until you find the people that you need everything comes together absolutely so one thing i can tell you guys about me is i don't know everything and never claim to i'm, I'm not some massive giant business expert where i know everything about everything 
here's what I learned a long time ago. Yes, you have to master your 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 hard skill. You have to have your your one craft that you're absolutely an expert in. Yeah. But you need a team, and your team and their level of contribution is what's going to define the overall accomplishment of the mission. You know, it's no different yeah. than when you're going and kicking doors down in Iraq or Afghanistan, right? Every single person has their job. Every yeah. single person knows that the person next to them is going to do their job. So they solely focus on what they're doing for the, for the mission. And mm -hmm. we, take the same, we take the same aspect. You know, I, I may not have the answer, but I guarantee you, I do know somebody who does or Google does. You know, yeah. um, you know we, we, never, we, we never tell somebody we know an answer without acknowledging that, hey, you know what? We don't know that answer, but we're going to find out immediately. Yeah. Um, I, I believe in just being honest and transparent because we don't know everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the power of, you know, even though your business is like very much a, an actual product, right? Um, the online benefit of just having so many contacts all over the place, right? Like we met at a conference and, you know, I'm from Canada, you're from Georgia and, you know, it's, it's just amazing the technology and the different connections that you can make just by going to different things. And you know, even 20 years ago, people didn't do that as much, right? Not even Not the online I mean, this, stuff, this but just going to conferences and yeah, but like even just going to conferences and meeting different people, like, you know, you didn't do that as much, especially as a small business owner, right? Like, yeah, maybe as a VP or connecting with other VPs and stuff, but you know, your, your business was really what, maybe a hundred miles from where you lived and that's about it. Right. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, my, I moved, obviously I live here in Charleston now. Um, I came down here after I got out of the Navy. Um, but, I mean, I, I set up everywhere I can. I mean, that's the, uh, the glory of technology these days is you're not limited. Yeah. So many people focus on a local market um, when they're starting their business. And I think it's a huge mistake. Um, yes, you need to be active in your local market. However, with the tools and technology that we have via social media and Instagram and, and Facebook and LinkedIn and yeah. uh, Google Plus and all, all the other tools we have available, um, you don't have to do business in just your local area. And yeah. it, it does allow you to create and expand at a faster rate when you do use those tools um you know i've got friends that have pulled eight figures off of instagram in less than a year mm -hmm. um, wow. you know i mean they're selling half million dollar products but it's still a uh it's still a huge part of business um yeah. i mean a lot of my sales have come through social media um you know a lot of our marketing efforts a lot of the website traffic is driven from social media mm -hmm. um so it's, it's definitely a great resource. And if you are starting up, you know, it definitely needs to be a focal point because it's free marketing. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, looking at how you started about a year ago, um, let's talk a little bit about the money part of, of starting a business. So what did that look like for you? I know you mentioned you have a couple of partners, but what did that look like? Uh, so here's how I started. I started with the ability that I knew what I was doing. I knew my products. And I knew how to provide solutions to clients for their issues. Mm -hmm. And I had a pretty good, strong network. Um, but I had a dollar seventy-eight when I started my business. I didn't have enough money to go buy a business license. I started my my very first transaction is actually the one my now business partners. Um, you met you met her in uh, at the conversation, Christy Morgan, Doctor Christy mm -hmm. Morgan. Um, she was my very first sale. Um, and I told her like, she knew exactly where I was, what was going on. And, you know, I told her, you know, very upfront, this is the situation. Uh, this is where we're at. This is our launch, but I don't have anything legally set up. So right. I need you to give me some time to fill this. <laughs> if I've got to get legal structures in place. Um, and she did. I mean, she, she worked with me. I mean, she'd known me for a couple of years now. Um, we had yeah. actually met at a conference back in 2007, early, early 2017. Um, so 
she knew she knew me. She knew who I was. I had done. I'd actually done work for her previously. Um, so she knew the quality. She knew what to expect. And she knows that, that I'm going to maintain my word and it may, it, you know, at the particular moment, it was going to take a little bit of time, but she also knew that she knew she was going to get taken care of, you know, at the, mm -hmm. end, of the, at the end of the day, because that's how I operate. Yeah. I think that's such a key point though. Like, you know, for people who are in the same boat where they're like, you know, I've got a, a great dream. I've got an amazing vision for business and, and have the confidence that they can get started, but don't have the cash um reputation is huge and it is. you know that that goes a long way even when you don't have the cash because there's so much money out there it's just getting the money but it's your reputation and your confidence around what you're doing that's going to make that part much easier for you it really it really is it's all about tapping into your network um all the yeah. people that you know you i mean those are those are all the people i hit up first you know i i let a yeah. lot know you know, hey, I'm now on my own. This is what I'm doing. This is what the direction we're going in. This is where we will be. Would you like to be one of our first clients to jump mm -hmm. on board and support our mission? Um, you don't have to. You don't have to have funds to start a business. I will tell mm -hmm. you that it's a million times easier to have funds. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. But if you're gonna start up a business, my biggest recommendation is. Don't quit your day job and build it on the side first. That is probably mistake one that I made. Yeah, that's what most people say. You keep know. your keep your yeah, keep yeah, your job keep, and just build on the side. Yeah. Yeah, keep keep your inflow your 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 normal income. Put three four hours a day in addition to your normal everyday routine. Sacrifice yeah. a little bit you know, and build something sustainable over a longer period of time where it's not as stressful for you and your family, or whatever mm -hmm. your current situation is. If you are going to go and you're going to jump off the deep end, you better be ready to swim because it is very yeah. much like being dropped in the middle of the, of the ocean with no life preserver, no life boats, no, no way to call for help. And you're gonna, you're gonna start sinking and you better start swimming. Yeah. <laughs> so, but in your case, you were doing the same type of, you're in the same industry. So that would have been a little bit tricky to keep your, your job, right? Yeah. So I couldn't keep my job and do what yeah. I'm doing. It wasn't possible. Um, exactly. Yeah. I actually had a confrontation because I had done some consultation uh, for another company and that's kind of what really broke the straw. Um, you know, I was doing consultation to help another, another small veteran owned company. And mm -hmm. you know, I told my CEO about it and said, Hey, you know, I, this weekend, this is what I did. Um, and he got really, really, really upset that I was doing consultation. I'm like, I'm not making signs. I'm not, I'm not doing anything that takes away from our business. You know, yeah. like it's another veteran and he doesn't do anything that we do at all. Mm -hmm. completely separate side of the industry. I'm just trying to help the guy, you know, and I got paid for it and he yeah. did not like that at all. And that's when, uh, that's when conflict of interest letter got drafted. And I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So was it your friend having his business that made you realize that was a similar type of business model that you wanted to have in supporting veterans? Um, not not necessarily um to be honest with you i just i knew that i had the ability to create something in our industry that a lot of veterans can do there's a lot of crafty veterans out there and there's yeah. a lot of making their own products the number one problem i see is these guys are not charging mm -hmm. what they should be i mean i've got a guy that makes a two foot by four foot you know, custom uh, engraved flag, painted all the all the works. I mean, they're beautiful. Yeah, I, I think I saw that. I mean, he's Facebook, making yeah. six dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, that's not a business, buddy. That's that's not even a hobby. Like, you're losing mm -hmm. money producing a product where you make six dollars an hour, and it takes you a week to produce it. It doesn't yeah. make money. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's a very large problem. A lot of a lot of startups think that undercutting and underpricing is the key to the growth. 
and it's not. Yeah. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is under undervaluing and underpricing yourself. Yeah, it's hard to go backwards. It is, it is. Yeah. You know, and when you start off at the bottom, you, you can't go up. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can always come down on pricing, but you can't go back up. It's no different than shopping for a new car. Yeah. yeah. You know? So as you're starting this business then, and you're needing all these different trades to make the signs, like you mentioned, welders and all kinds of different trades, um, do you basically start everybody on contract then as you get a sign and have business? Yeah. Is that yep. the model that you want to keep or are you working towards having full-time employment for people or what's your strategy on that? We're cur currently, we are, uh, we actually had a phone call today discussing and uh, implementing employees and stuff like that. And, you know, it, it's nice with the 1099s and not having employees, obviously, you know, from a financial standpoint in a, in a startup. Um, however, for long-term sustainability, I mean, eventually you have to have your your core reliable team that's there day in, day out as an employee. Um, you know, that is that is a critical aspect. Uh, so yeah. eventually, yes, we're going to have employees. Eventually, we'll have franchisees um, that will have their own, you know, equipment and they'll have their own employees as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, that's, that's a long-term direction. That's a five to ten year plan. You know, I want yeah. where I want to be is I want to show a franchisee that you can build your eight figure business within, you know, 36 months. And here's all the tools and processes that you guys need to implement that. And we'll continue the manufacturing from HQ. Mm -hmm. um, you guys will have the service trucks to be able to go service signs, handle installations, and uh, be able to sell products at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when you're growing now, um, you mentioned that some of the clients were, you know, people that you knew and stuff. Is there a certain um, type of business, I guess, that you're going after? Or um, Yes, not not particularly um corporate retail obviously is is a good fra different franchises are good for us um i like restaurants i do a lot of the restaurants here in charleston um a lot of the bars and lounges um real estate construction uh companies um really depends exxon is you know one of my biggest clients they're not they're they're really an industry of their own um yeah they're number yeah. 11 on, on the global list, yeah. uh, but they do all sorts of different things. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, an industry specific as every single business that has a office or a storefront requires signage. Yeah. You know, so I'm and not, I'm not particular to any one of them. I want to help everybody I can possibly help. Yeah. And so like a lot of these are like the lit up signs then the large like coroplast or whatever the material is, but are you doing like for very small companies too? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, work, uh, we work with small companies every day. Um, yeah. Small companies are the backbone. You know, yeah. we, we have to take care of these small companies and the way I look at small companies and especially startups, I want to ensure that these guys are taken care of with their branding and signage properly from the get go so that they yeah. can replicate. So a lot, of, a lot of companies have a hard time finding a manufacturer that can grow with them and be able mm -hmm. to serve across the country as they grow. We don't have right. that problem. I do this stuff all over the country. I've, I've shipped to 13 different countries in my career. So I'm very familiar with being able to start small, mm -hmm. build a strategic partnership. You know, that typically we go into a two to five year agreement you know, they have a set percentage over cost. This is what it's going to be. This is where replication uh, to make it easier for them. So that they're not wasting time and they're expanding on signage and they're spending more time expanding and, and growing. Mm -hmm. So with a lot of the smaller companies, you know, the mom and pop, um, I, I find anyway, and you'll probably agree with this, but you know, you, you start off and then you get so busy just running what you're doing that you kind of forget about rebranding and, you know, the importance of doing that, you know, maybe every five years or depending on the business. Right. So 
you know, if you're driving around or one of your partners is driving around and they see the sign that looks awful, you can tell it's from the 80s, that sort of thing. Are you also doing design work and you're kind of coming mm -hmm. in as a bit of a consultant to help them with a bit of the branding as well? Absolutely, yeah. We do offer full corporate branding packages. Um, definitely, uh, definitely something we, we have really, really good designers. Um, one of them did all of Chick-fil-A branding. Um, all the signage that you see for Chick-fil-A, he, he did all of the draft work for all of it. Um, mm -hmm. Got another partner um, who, uh, that does, he strictly does branding itself and it's in its entirety. Um, you know, brand isn't just your logo. Yeah. Your, your brand is so much more than just a logo. So, uh, you know, a $50 logo on Fiverr does not constitute as a brand. Yeah, exactly. And it's not going to be, you're not even going to get the right file that you need to make signs from Fiverr, to be honest with you. Um, right. Just so you know. Um, but that's where we come into play because we do all of that for you. We mm -hmm. also provide the files, you get the raw files from us. We don't hijack and hold hostage the file. Right. First step we do in a rebranding process is we come to an agreement. This is what we're going to do. This is the package. Um, and then we, we get that done. Whether you do the signs through us or not, right. you know, that, that's your goal. Most of the time, yes, they're going to do the signs with us. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to help brands in every way that we can as a company and design happens to be one of those aspects. Right. Yeah. It's usually the starting point for sure. Or even again, internationally, right? If, like you're not serving Canada yet, but you know, maybe there's somebody who's listening to the podcast that is intrigued by what you do and you could still help them with the design part and then they can source the rest locally if they... I've got a, I actually have a, uh, I have a manufacturing partner in Canada, so I am oh, very look at you. able to work <laughs> in Canada. Um, yeah, I do. Um, I have, I have sent, in my last five years, I have probably sent 20,000 jobs to Canada. No way. Yeah. Wow. I mean, the, my, my previous company was literally a top five industry leader. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, so I've done a lot of work in uh, Toronto, Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know yeah all the uh, bigger <laughs> cities all sorts of uh i've got a bunch of friends from canada um mm -hmm. you know my one of my best friends is from canada i played in the nhl um you know so i've uh i enjoy i've never actually been to canada i've seen well, you canada just mentioned from you mentioned hockey you mentioned hockey and everybody will love you already you're in you're in i play hockey yeah, oh, there you go. <laughs> We're never getting involved in no, and I play hockey. Uh, yeah. I now play on the sled team because I can't I can't skate. About uh, about three months ago, I tore my patella and my meniscus uh, on stand up. So I've been uh, reduced to the sled team, but I am very much a hockey advocate. I have yeah. season tickets to the professional games, um, and I do play. Um, all over the country. I mean, we travel literally all over the country to play sled. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's a blast. I love hockey. Hockey's an amazing yeah. sport. You know, as a kid, it's so important to be in sports. And I think, you know, we both have that small town connection. I'm small town too. But, uh, you know, and with the kids and stuff, yeah, you put them in the sports to keep them busy. And nowadays off the video games and everything like that. But, you know, especially something like hockey, it just, continues on right you keep those friendships or it's a way that you can just hang out with you know the guys and uh yeah it's just a nice way to connect well it builds it builds it builds a lot of skill sets that you're going to need in life and as an adult I mean, yeah. you're gonna fail in, in in sports you're gonna fail significantly you're gonna have a coach that's hard on you that's that's making you better yeah. right you have to be a coachable adult if you're not yeah. a coachable adult you're never going to be successful yeah. Right. It's just not going to happen. You may have a glimpse of success here and there, but you're not going to have long-term sustainability if you're not a coachable person. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the skills of fortitude, you know, the relentless attack and, and getting better in the drive, you know, being able to fall and get back up being able to get punched in the mouth to keep going, you know, those yeah. you know, things happen, you know, life, life deals adversity. Business deals a whole lot of adversity. And sports mm -hmm. is a very good common core building block for a successful life. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, my son had, um, he started playing up on a higher team this year. And that was the whole mental thing that he had to get past that, you know, he wasn't the biggest kid anymore and you know, got into checking and hadn't done that yet. And, you know, so it's even if it's just that kind of stuff where you can work through, OK, this is going to be OK and I can rise to that level. Right. Absolutely. So, Until you get yeah, there's so much. Yeah. I tell, I tell everybody, man, it, it'll feel better when it quits hurting. Just yeah. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. So um, another thing that I just wanted to ask you a little bit about, you know, when you've got these interstate signs, so when you're dealing with a lot of these big companies, then uh, obviously that's another sign that they also have, the, the big ones on the interstates. Are you also going to that level as well? No, that's a whole other thing. I did not do billboards. Adams and Lamar own billboards around the entire North American continent. Okay, so that's it. Not a yeah. market that I am even attempting to to try to play against. Uh, yeah. Those guys have it. They've got it nailed down. They've got systems and processes. They do it all over the world, and yeah. I will never, ever beat them. They've been doing it for over 75 years. Yeah. They are the best for a reason, and that's just an aspect of the market I'm not even trying to go after. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Canada, we have Patterson as the big sign company, but yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the billboard billboard stuff. I mean, I do road signs like the interstate, you know, aluminum signs, you know, mm -hmm. like, like if you're going on an exit, you know, those signs. But the the billboards themselves are just not a aspect that I want to go after. I focus more on custom stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, the 3D signs. Yeah, we do volume printing as well, but it's more of custom work, custom branded um, solutions for our clients. Mm -hmm. So besides the, obviously the um, social enterprise, I guess, part of, of what your, your business, of, you know, helping veterans, and obviously that's something that everybody would want to support. Um, what are some of the other ways that you're competing against some of these companies that have been around forever? Um, quality one. I mean, we, uh, we offer lifetime warranty on a lot of our products. Um, wow. Wow companies don't even offer warranty um, mm -hmm. so like all of my letters uh, that, that we produce all not all of our trade show but a very good majority of our trade show items uh, mm -hmm. do have lifetime warranties um, they have lifetime guarantees if anything, anything happens to them uh, you know we take care of it we replace it um, you know free of charge um, you know the response um, you know, part of our relentless reliability is our responsiveness. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't think that it should take you a week or two weeks or three weeks to get quotes back. We think you should have it within 48 hours. Um, yeah. We do quotes on spot. We do service calls within 48 hours. So, you know, if your channel letters go out or your, or your pylon sign, uh, you know, goes out, you call us and, and we get somebody scheduled to come out there and service the location and get it done immediately. Um, mm -hmm. your signs, especially your exterior signs, are your best employee. They work 24-7. Yeah. And if it's not operating at its capacity, it's one, it's diminishing your brand. And two, yeah. it's pushing away customers that would be coming to you. You know what I mean? So yeah, for us, for sure. uh, being, being very quick, being very responsive. And we also were willing to do what, what other companies aren't. I mean, we don't shy away from custom jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of companies stick to the standard basic, this is what we do and this is it. And we're yeah. over here. If we can dream it, we'll figure out how to build it. Yeah, that's awesome. And there's always people who want that, exactly that, right? They want to stick out. They want to have their sign look a lot different than everybody else. So it's always exactly. a market for custom. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's a huge there. The custom signs is searched 1.4 million times a month. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The market's there. The market is definitely there. Um, yeah. You know, playing, playing, trying to play the Google game obviously as a startup is a little tough. But uh, my previous company, I was number one for 3D signs on the planet. Wow. So when it came to 3D signs, I mean, we did them everywhere. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So besides growing across the world, I guess. <laughs> Eventually, 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, in the next five years and, and uh, starting some franchises. Is there anything else that you can see yourself doing in the next five to 10 years? That's uh, absolutely. On the radar? Yeah, I mean, eventually, I mean, my book, my book is going to get launched. Um, I've been talking, I've talked to Tammy uh, Kling about that several, several times. Mm -hmm. uh, still in process. Uh, we are trying to get that, you know, finalized and launched. Um, but I do want to, I do, uh, I do speak around the country as well. Um, I, I speak at, at different veteran events, different business events. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, obviously I, I like to speak a little bit more. Um, you know, the business right now has me full time. Eventually, uh, you know, that won't be the case and I'll, I'll have much more time to be able to, to go do the events and, and do the speaking engagement, do book signings and stuff like that. But I, I really just want to help as many people around, around, you know, not just the United States, but I've, I've been to 23 countries. So yeah. I, I want to help other, other people around the world um, know that, you know, they aren't limited um, from, from their current circumstance, you know, mm -hmm. life deals, yeah. life deals what it deals and you have the ability to change it. If you're, if you can one, get outside your comfort zone and grow, uh, which is where most people don't want to do. And yeah. two, getting out and, and getting the right contacts. Uh, the right contacts is critical. Yeah. I know I've, I've shared this story before on the podcast, but, you know, my husband, he went to Nicaragua and, um, you know, he was sitting beside this younger kid who was probably in early 20s. And, you know, so he's reading his book. And it was a personal development or, you know, business book. And, and this guy just kept looking over at him, you know, so finally he's like, so, you know, making some conversation and, and he was just so intrigued by my husband's book and he's like, you can have it. And he just couldn't believe it. He's like, could you sign this book? You know, there's such a hunger all over in all of these different countries. And we're there so fortunate, we're so fortunate, right? We just have so much at our fingertips that we take for granted, but yeah, there's such a need to be able to just empower people and, um, help them believe that they can do it. And again, the stuff that we take is just common knowledge. You know, that's stuff that they don't have access to often. So. Very, very yeah. true. It's very true. I mean, the United States and Canada, I mean, the, the luxury that we have as a country yeah. overall freedoms and liberties that we have, it's not like that around the rest of the world. Yeah. It's really not. I mean, and, and being able to uplift and, and help others and get them out of their, of their current environment and see them thriving is one yeah. of the best gifts on the planet. Yeah, exactly. Great. So if people want to get a hold of you, Justin, what's the best way to do that? <coughs> uh, the best way is probably Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Uh, my Instagram is Justin Myers Pirate Hunter. Um, and my Facebook is, uh, Justin Myers. I think the professional page is actually Justin Myers enterprise. Um, you can email me at Justin at signs by veterans.com. Our phone number here is eight, seven, seven S B B 1776. Um, so you can always call that line, uh, to get a hold of us as well. Um, Perfect. but yeah, social have media probably the best. Yeah, we'll have some links um, as part of the show notes here as well. So, absolutely, and then the website awesome. dot com. So that's that's easy. Yeah, perfect. It's not um, hard to find businesses nowadays, right? So people nah, find it's, you. Yeah, it's really yeah. not. <laughs> it's yeah. pretty simple. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. I love your vision and just how quickly you've grown in not even a year. Congrats on the one year anniversary coming up and wish you all the success in your business. Thank you, Candace. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, you betcha. Okay, keep in touch. Yes, ma'am, I will. Okay. Bye. Bye.